on this episode of Carnage. Whoa! Nah, on this episode of Carnage, we're gonna stick a Harrow blower on my LC Tirana. We're at MPW Performance today and we're about to throw my Tirana on the rollers. The reason for that is, a little while ago we took it to Meguiar's Motor X and as part of our Carnage Live activation, we fitted one of Harrop's brand new TVS 2300 supercharger kits to suit Holden V8 in front of a live audience. Let's rewind the tape and see how that all went down. Okay, behind me is my 1970 LC GTR Tirana. I've had the car a long time, over 20 years. It's been off the road for the past five years. We've just sort of revived it. We drove it in here naturally aspirated and the plan by the end of the weekend is to fit this Harrop TVS 2300 blower kit and fire it up in supercharged form. Um, really neatly put together uh, kit, water to wear intercooled, beautiful CNC machine, billet idler assembly. Looks really trick, can't wait to get it on the car. Bear in mind we we're going to be fitting a blower to the car. We did a few upgrades ahead of the event. We fitted this TurboSmart FPR 1200 fuel pressure regulator. We've also upgraded the ECU from a really old school Haltech E6 GMX to a newer Haltech Platinum Sport GM. So just a few changes that we made to the car ahead of time. Righto, we've done a fair bit of disassembly on the car. The factory intake manifold's been removed. Also, the driver's side low mount alternator bracket that we had on the car is gone. We've got the gaskets ready in the valley for the blower to go on, which is a really exciting part of the process, obviously. Um, and we'll relocate the alternator to the Harrop idler assembly, which sits over on the passenger side. So, um, yeah, about to plonk this blower on. Just finished setting up the idler assembly here. Just about to throw the alternator on. Just changed to the Harrop um, eight rib pulley and then we can throw the belt on. Don't film this bit. So we just finished installing the fuel rails and the injectors, Raceworks injectors that we picked up for this thing yesterday. We've run into a bit of an issue with the thermostat housing. The blower kit's designed for a factory style thermostat housing, whereas I've got this billet one here with like an AN style dash 1590 off the top. So I've run into clearance issues there. Uh, we're just trying to figure out a workaround at the moment um, that may or may not involve doing some grinding and some TIG welding. Fingers crossed, uh, we can just lop that off and weld the fitting straight onto here, get around our clearance issues, make up a new top radiator hose and away we go. Okay, it's about 3.30 in the afternoon. Essentially, once we extend the wiring to move the uh, alternator from the driver's side up to the passenger side, where it's mounted in the kit, it'll be ready to fire. Um, we don't have the, uh, any of the intercooler system hooked up just yet. Uh, and thankfully my mate Phil Kerjean from Fuelworks happened to be down here for Motorx. He's got his car here. He's given us some pointers on the best approach for this top radiator hose, which sort of had us a bit miffed. So um, yeah, really stoked. I mean, ideally, um, potentially if Adam from MPW is available to come and load a base tune into the car, we might even get to fire it up today on day one, which is really exciting. 
So basically really well placed and while I've got you, I'd like to thank these two blokes, um, really good mates of mine who have been helping me out with this car for 20 years uh, from where I grew up in Mudgee. Tony Rohr and Tim McGrath, um, quality blokes and we definitely wouldn't be this far progressed without them. The boys have just given us a call and said that they've uh, got everything buttoned up up the front or, or ready to turn key and fire it so uh, we're going to jump in and, and program the Haltech ECU to, to fire with the new injectors and with the different map sensor that we're running now. We had a bit of an issue, it felt like the engine was locked up uh, and it turned out uh, that there was a short in the car's wiring which was basically causing the injectors to stay open, fill the cylinders up with fuel. So we pulled the plugs, hit the key, sprayed a bit of fuel around unfortunately. That's what happens when you do these sorts of things live unfortunately but we traced the issue, uh, it was a short, we got it sorted, just getting the plugs back in now and um, with any sort of luck we'll have another go at keying it shortly. Adam from MPW loaded a bass tune into the car, we fired it up again, ran really sweet, was idling up a bit um, and we traced that issue to this thing. Uh, I assumed that the idle air control out of the 5 litre throttle body would be compatible with the 4 bolt LS style throttle body that we've run on the blower kit. That turns out not to be the case, so first thing tomorrow morning we've got to search a new one of these guys and it should fire up and run sweet as a nut. Doing a few touch-ups on the tune. It's not true, I'm checking my emails. Can we, can we weld in here? Abe is the gun fabricator from MPW and he is gonna TIG this modified fitting to this billet thermostat housing for us. Uh, we've got all the gear, we've got the TIG here from Heron Forbes, uh, everything we need except for a welding helmet. So we're on a mission to procure one from one of the vendors here at uh, Performance Garage. So we'll see how we go. We'll get it done. A welding helmet. You don't happen to have any having one here. kicking around? Yeah, like, probably the sunglasses might like be your best bet. Okay, right at the moment we got Abe from uh, MPW behind me uh, ticking up this thermostat housing. I can't burn this pretty face, all I got. It's on a machine he's never used before. We need it done about three hours ago, so uh, no pressure, eh? Yesterday afternoon when we did a bit of a preliminary fire up on the car, uh, we noticed that it was idling up trace that issue back to the idle air control valve which I thought uh, that the valve out of the 5 litre throttle body would work. Turns out that it's different to the one on the LS specific throttle body that's uh, required for the blower kit. So Telfo did a bit of a shout out on the Carnage Facebook page and thankfully a punter came to our rescue with an LS idle air control valve that we've just fitted up to the motor um, and that should fix that issue. So thank you for that champion, really appreciate your help. Yeah, give it a couple of stabs, mate. <laughs> well, that's a wrap here at MotorX. As you can see, it starts, fires up, runs. We're gonna to get to drive this thing out of here blown, which was the objective for the weekend, uh, and I'm beyond stoked. Um, thank you to Harrop for engineering such a beautiful supercharger kit for this thing, for us guys that like mucking around with Holden V8s. Um, likewise to Haltech for a really neat plug and play ECU solution for these engines. Um, the guys at TurboSmart for helping out with the fuel pressure regulator and also getting us out of a bit of a spot with an MPT fitting that we needed yesterday afternoon as well, which was great. Um, 
Raceworks for looking after us on the injectors. We appreciate that. Um, Adam and Abe from MPW, absolute champions, went above and beyond to help us achieve this result. Really, really stoked. Uh, the next step is to get this car to MPW so that Adam can get it on the rollers and wind a tune into it. And then we'll take it to the track and see what sort of numbers we can achieve. So really excited about that. Righto, the car's strapped down to the dyno. Uh, Adam's about to kick it in the guts and start working away on the tune. Uh, the engine itself is a bone stock injected five litre out of about a VR, I think. I bought the motor second hand for all the 500 bucks, so it's a bit of an unknown quantity. The ECU is a, a plug and play uh, Haltech Platinum Sport GM deal, um, which is a really handy thing. I had an E6 GMX in the car for a long time. This one, um, similar in that it's just a plug and play replacement for the stock ECU, just got a bit more functionality than the older one. And we can expand it to muck around with flex fuel and stuff down the track, which um, you know potentially we might do. So yeah, look Looking forward to, to seeing how much grunt the thing makes. Don't have astronomical expectations because like I said, it's very much a, a bone stock engine of unknown kilometers. Um, so yeah, see how we go. Righto, Adam's just done the first pull on the dyno. Uh, still very fat, very conservative in terms of timing. Uh, we've made 228.3 horsepower at the wheels, which is not a bad starting point. Um, he's just making some changes to the tune up now, and um, yeah, we'll go again. Well, we've just wrapped up the tuning process here at MPW. We've ended up with 302 rear wall horsepower, which considering these injected five liters make about 150, 160 at the tire standard, I think it's a really good number. We've effectively doubled the factory horsepower of this engine just by plonking this blower on. What are your thoughts, Adam? Yeah, look for a, an uncracked motor in the way of no camshaft, no supporting mods, no valve springs. I think it's pretty impressive that literally doubled the power of it. There's big improvements to be had by putting a set of valve springs into it and, and keeping all the boost in there and we're getting a bit of valve float at the moment. I would say there's probably 20 to 30 kilowatts gain just from valve springs alone. Put a camshaft in it, we're probably gonna pick up another 70 to 80 kilowatts depending on what we do. We can put a bit more timing in it. Um, but yeah, look, kill a bit of gear. Cheers for that, Adam. We'll, um Next step in the process, obviously, is to take the car to the track and uh, run a number. Somewhere in the 12s would be nice. We're only on a little tyre, a 225, so there might be some challenges there. But really looking forward to seeing uh, what sort of number the car's capable of with this Harrah blower kit. And you'll see that on a future episode of Carnage.